Hi everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So, sorry about the sound quality, I'm working in an underground concrete room, but that's because I have been trying to measure something which is incredibly weak. And that is the pressure put on a reflector by bouncing photons of light off of it. You see, photons of light, they carry energy, therefore they carry mass, E equals mc squared, and when they hit something, they impart a little bit of momentum as they bounce off. Now, if they're absorbed, they also impart momentum, but half as much. Just like throwing a rubber ball at something, if the rubber ball sticks, it imparts less momentum than if the rubber ball bounces. Theoretically, you could take advantage of this and use either high-powered lasers or the sun to accelerate spacecraft up to high velocities by bouncing the light off of them. The spacecraft, of course, wouldn't have to carry any of its own fuel. And it does work. It's been proven to work out in space using solar cell spacecraft. But the effect is quite tiny, and measuring it down here on the Earth is difficult even in the most advanced labs. So about a week ago, I published a video where I was pushing a piece of aluminum foil around in a vacuum chamber using my high-powered laser. It seemed to me like I was using the light pressure to do it, but a lot of my friends pointed out that it was probably mostly actually the same thing that causes a Crookes radiometer to spin, and that is the fact that the foil heats up and the particles of air, since I didn't have a perfect vacuum, bounced into it since it was hot, gained momentum as they flew off, imparting force onto the sheet, which was probably more than the amount of force put on by the photons themselves. So I've had to redesign everything. In fact, I've got a device over here, which is incredibly sensitive. And so here it is. I've built a balance beam with an incredibly long bar, as you can see here, balanced on a knife edge. Those are razor blades there. I've got a magnet and a lead counterweight over here along with a bar of silver. This is to dampen any motion so it vibrations even out quickly. You know, eddy currents only occur when they are got relative motion, so if there's no relative motion it'll just settle out and a thin wire pointing at lines drawn on individual pages of a book. All to measure the tiny amount of force that this 8 watt laser will apply to this little tiny mirror that I've got inside of this evacuated glass bottle here. See, so the idea here is that the glass will actually catch those particles that fly off the mirror and they'll run into the glass, thus cancelling out any momentum that they would be applying to the mirror. And since photons of light can go through the glass, I should be only detecting the radiation pressure. Now to make sure that I've actually got that effect, I've got a piece of activated charcoal in there, and that's to absorb photons. Theoretically, I should get half the amount of displacement here with that. And also, I've left a little bit of room so that I can shoot the laser through the bottle without hitting anything. So by comparing those three measurements, I should be able to determine the exact amount of pressure that the light is actually applying. Now, of course, I can put like a little tiny piece of foil on here or something to calibrate the scale. In fact, I think I'm going to do that right now. So I have cut out a 9 square centimeter piece of aluminum foil. So there's my 1 millimeter square piece of aluminum foil. It should weigh only around 50 micrograms. Let's see if I can get it onto this scale here. I'm going to set this camera down looking through this telescope. Okay, so the camera's in focus. And I've got a value there. Let's see what happens when I set the foil on there. Okay, I think I got it. Now let's let that settle back up and see what her value is. All right. I think I can use that information. So it would appear that I've got this balance set up so it's so sensitive that just putting that tiny piece of foil on there was enough to bring this down by several pages worth of distance. Which is good because as it happens, my calculations for the amount of thrust this laser will produce is about one-tenth of what that piece of foil weighs. Not exactly a lot. 
but I think I can do it. Okay, so I've actually replaced the camera. That way I can film in two locations at once. Now let's turn on the laser, see where it's pointing. Okay, so I've got it aimed right at the mirror inside there. So I actually want to aim the laser off the mirror for the first test. That way I can cancel out any effect that the wires are going to have, the electromagnetically on the metal there. So, so yeah, now I've just got it aimed at the aluminum foil. That shouldn't hurt anything. So I reviewed the footage and it looked like when I put the 50 microgram weight on the scale it only moved down by six pages worth of you know, distance on the paper ruler. And since I've calculated that the laser is at most going to produce the equivalent of five micrograms, just air currents of any kind is going to move that needle around more than the half a page I should expect. So I've moved outside of the room. I've let everything calm down in there, and uh, I think the only thing that should be happening now is like seismic vibrations moving the needle. So I'll be very still for a little while while I plug this in. I'm going to be turning the laser on remotely. Okay, I'm going to hold still for a little while. And I think I'm going to try turning the laser on for 10 seconds at a time. Is, uh, do some other tests I've done it seemed like after 10 seconds that it was the maximum displacement of the needle and that's when it would like balance itself out so here we go lasers on four five six seven eight nine ten okay that may not have been exactly 10 seconds but um, Close enough, yeah. Hopefully with the laser aimed at the floor, it shouldn't have moved the scale at all. But we'll, we'll find out. So I looked at the footage and it appeared like the needle moved hardly at all. Just a few vibrations due to seismic activity. So now let's move this laser so that it's pointing at the bottle. So I'll have the laser go through the glass without actually hitting the uh, mirror inside. That way we can see what the laser does to the glass itself. So I've got my glasses over the camera so that you can actually see what's going on here. See if I turn the laser on, you can see that the beam is off to the side of the bottle. Okay, so now we should be able to cancel out any effect that's just from the glass. Shooting through the bottle in three, two, one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So, so now I've got the laser pointed at the charcoal, so the photons should be being absorbed. And, uh, let's see if we can actually see any movement on the scale now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, it's time for the final test where I've actually got the light bouncing off of a mirror inside the bottle. And uh, with any luck, this should produce twice the effect that the light on the carbon produced. So here it goes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. There it is. I hope it moved more than it did last time. So let's actually open the door. See if I can show you guys what's going on in there without going in. Uh, uh, oh, it's going to hit the camera. No, oh, no, that should work. I don't know if you can see in there. You can see I'm just turning on the laser by touching it to these wires here. All right, I'm the camera in. You guys should be able to see what I'm doing. There we go. Let's go have a look at it. So I've just been reviewing the footage and it appears that my experiment was a total success. I saw exactly what I expected. 
the light bouncing off the mirror moved the needle by about half a page, whereas the light being absorbed by the charcoal moved it by about a quarter of a page. I did notice that the light going through the bottle itself did move the needle very slightly, but I guess I expected that because it is heating the glass a little bit. I'm pretty stoked though because this took me so long to be able to actually measure. I, I've had to tinker with this thing for days. So here's the equation for figuring out how much force photons of light apply. If you take the amount of power, joules per second, or watts, and divide that by the speed of light, and you get the number of newtons of force that that light would be applying if it's hitting a target and being absorbed. If it's being reflected, then you double that number. That works out being 0 0.05 micronewtons for an 8 watt laser bouncing light off of a mirror, or about 5 micrograms. The same amount of force would be applied by reflecting 16 square inches of sunlight off of a mirror. If you guys would like to make a similar balance on your own, I'll put a link in the description to where you can see the plans for it. Keep in mind that I've made quite a few modifications, like the little dampener and stuff. But anyway, about the first video I was talking about, I ended up taking the video down and making it unlisted because if I'm going to have one of the most popular videos on the subject on YouTube, I figured it may as well have correct information. So it's unlisted, I'll put a link in the description if you'd like to see it, but that's why I took it down. Hopefully I didn't do anything majorly wrong here. If I did, please let me know quickly. But here we go. Hope you all enjoyed, I'll see you next time.